Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. We're here at the entrance of Green Aqua and we have beautiful weather finally, so we can start the video here. We're gonna build the round aquarium at the entrance here. So follow me, let's see what we did here. First, this is the first aquarium that you see when you enter Green Aqua. Sesame open. And then, I actually really like the fact that this round aquarium is here. You can see how nice this whole structure is and you can see the bonsai tree at the top of it. We asked you guys whether you want a bonsai tree or you actually want some kind of fire, tabletop fire here. We decided for the bonsai tree, thanks for your, your votes, because we think, as you guys, many of you actually pointed out that this is more natural here at the entrance and it goes better with the green aqua way of thinking and the natural feeling. So we have it here, it's filled up with water and this episode is showing you how we did it. plant selection in this tank. We have 11 types of plants, mostly plants that tolerate uh, an environment without CO2, so low-tech plants. We do have CO2 injection in this tank, but we're not sure about the light coming from uh, the ceiling. It's really far away from uh, the bottom of the aquarium. So we're gonna have the Ludwigia palustris, which is a really nice plant here. It's a red plant. It's, the, it's gonna be the only uh, definitely red plant in the gallery in this tank. The second one is the Hydrocotyle tripartita, which is a nice plant. It's gonna stay at the water level and let's hope that it's gonna like climb out of the water and it's gonna climb onto the lava stones. Third plant is the Anubias petite. It's a little Anubias, which is also a very good uh, low-tech plant. The start of the plant cleaning process, coffee and plants. Next one is the Cryptocorine Albedo Brown. The Albedo Brown is really nice small crypt that uh, is also a low-tech plant and it's gonna have a, like a reddish color. So this is also a reddish plant in the aquarium. Moving on, we have the Bucephalandra. We really like the uh, Anubias types and Bucephalandra types. This is the uh, mini red. It's gonna be also reddish tint in color. These are not really red plants, but they have like the reddish tint. So they're gonna add some color to the tank. The next one is a fern type. This is the Hygrophila pinatifida. The pinatifida is a really nice plant. I really like it. The only question is how long are we gonna let this grow? This can go really long and really fast, so we need to trim it regularly, but we're gonna take care of it. Next one is also a fern type. This one stays very green. This is the Bulbitis, the Bulbitis heudeoti. And then another third fern type, the Microsorum Nero. Really like this plant and it will compensate the other microsomes. The Nero has longer leaves. It has a different leaf structure, so it goes well with the Pinatifida and the Bulbitis. The plant cleaning process will start with taking the plant out of the pot and uh, cleaning it from the rock wool. You can just peel off the rock wool from the plant roots and then uh, use some water to clean the roots because the rock wool is much softer underwater. You can clean the remainder of the rock wool with some tweezers. This fat pot is the, the wavy green Bucephalandra. It's also a low-tech plant, goes well with the Anubias types. So we're really happy with this one as well. We, we've got two more plants uh, here. The last one, which is the potted plant here, is the Eleocaris sacicularis. We really like this one. This hair grass grows really nice. It grows about 10 to 15 centimeters, depending on the light conditions, and we can also trim it. The last plant, and this is the only lab plant that we're using, is the Liliopsis brasiliensis. And we really like this because it tolerates low light conditions as well, and it can be on the bottom of the aquarium. It's not really nice to trim that because if you start trimming it, maybe it's gonna get brownish. So we're gonna just 
leave it grow at the bottom of the tank where we're gonna use sand, but hopefully this is gonna feel good in the sand as well. And then we have terrestrial mosses. Oh, and I almost forgot that we have the 30k giveaway because the Grinako YouTube channel has passed 30,000 subscribers. Thank you guys. Uh, we're having this giveaway for a week now and we're gonna have it for one more week until our next video. If you live in the EU, you will get a 300 euro worth of Green Aqua coupon. If you live outside the EU, you will get a 300 euro worth of Amazon coupon. So stay tuned for the games, details in the description. Okay, so the bigger part of the planting is ready. As you can see, we have used terrestrial moss that we collected from our internal garden, which is going to be transformed into a beautiful Japanese garden soon. And we put it on the, on the top of, the, of this whole structure. And we are using iron wood in between the rocks here. And then all the low-tech plants, uh, all the fern types and all the anubias types and all the bucephalandra types will follow. We put the smaller plants up there. As you can see, the water level will be here. So all the plants will start from the water level. And uh, right now we're filling in the sand at the bottom of the aquarium and we're going to introduce some pebbles as well and some little rocks and I, I think we're going, to, we're going to continue using the lava stone also on, on the gravel downstairs. And then we're going to introduce the brasiliensis. So this is the planting phase. I think we're almost ready. Let's do some tweaking and then let's fill it up with water. As I told you in the last video, there are almost no standard products that we used in this aquarium. It's almost completely do-it-yourself. The only things that we used here is the Oazo Optimax 2000 water pump. We used a JBL external CO2 diffuser because the reactor didn't fit below the aquarium. And we used the Sika Matrix as biological filter media, which is used inside that round central piece, which is covered by lava rocks. And uh, basically what we do is we drill two holes in the middle, we take the water out, the pump will push it back, and then it's gonna go back inside the aquarium, making a circle of movement. So the water will go around the centerpiece of the aquarium by some plastic pipes that we introduced and drilled through this central piece, which is covered by lava rocks. And uh, this is basically it. Oh, and if you want to see how important this hobby is for some, check this out. The most hilarious moment in Green Aqua's life, I swear.
I'm so happy because the green aqua do-it-yourself project is at the end. We opted for the bonsai at the top. Thanks for your votes. You had this very good idea of having red plants at the top. The problem with red plants are that uh, they will lose the leaves and we wanted to have something that is green all around the year. So this is why we chose this one. The Muraya paniculata. This is the orange jessamine. I hope you guys like it. Maybe we will change it and make it like a more bonsai-like uh, uh, plant in the future. Don't forget that we have the 30k subscription giveaway. You can win 300 euros. Check out the details below in the description. So thanks again for watching us. Please subscribe if you didn't do so or hit the bell button to get notified of our future uploads. Until next week, bye.